Let's learn how to make 2D animations in Blender Grease Pencil as fast as possible. Why is it that every time I draw something amazing, the resolution is too low? That simply won't do if we're trying to upload our design to Printful. Printful is a print on demand service that allows you to make a revenue stream out of your artwork. You only play one role when you use Printful. You are the artist and designer. Printful will fulfill your shipments, also provide the material and print the designs onto them. So the only question left is what would you like to make? Printful has a plethora of options to choose from. It's really up to you what you want to sell. I myself am a digital artist. I know many of my viewers are as well. Maybe some products you can put around the desk or up on the wall that will help them in their artistic journey or inspire them at the very least. So put your all into creating high quality designs that people want to have have in their home or even as a part of their outfit. You can check out Printful with the link in the description below. Thank you very much for sponsoring. Now let's get back to the video. Blender is a 3D animation program. Due to heavy optimization, Blender should run pretty well on most systems. Today we're going to be using the Kadas Mind Maker Kit Mini PC to explore the world of Blender animation. While not having a physical graphics card, this mini PC is able to handle 2D animation in Blender, as well as 3D modeling and even simulation. So without further ado, follow the link in the description to blender.org slash download where you can download the latest version of Blender. So when you open up Blender, you're going to be given a screen like this. I'm gonna go ahead and save these preferences. Now, once you hit save preferences, you'll be brought to the Blender splash screen. From here, you wanna go under new file and click 2D animation. After clicking the 2D animation preset, you'll be brought to this canvas. You have your timeline below your, I think, believe it's called the dope sheet, the grease pencil dope sheet. You have your brushes below here and you can go ahead with your drawing tablet, um, just start drawing onto the canvas. And so what I'm doing, I'm pressing control Z to undo each stroke. So I highly recommend that you use Blender uh, Grease Pencil with a drawing tablet like this one. This here is the Sense Labs Pen Display Medium and we're also using it along plugged right in to the Kados Mind Maker Kit. Everything's running off of the Mind Maker Kit. I'm also recording. So, so far multitasking is going pretty good. To my left here is the Torbox Elite Plus shortcut key remote. So, a normal keyboard will work fine, but I prefer to use the Torbox because the inputs are much quicker. Okay, so really animation in Blender is quite simple. The tricky thing is getting a handle of navigation. Okay, so Copilot, why don't you give us an intro to how to navigate the 3D viewport in Blender? Absolutely. In Blender's 3D viewport, you can use the middle mouse button to rotate around your scene, shift middle mouse to pan, and scroll wheel to zoom in and out. These controls help you navigate your 3D space effectively. Ready for more tips? That's it, thank you. If we wanna get back to our camera view, basically our grease pencil view, all we have to do is click this camera button right here or you can click zero on the numpad. Okay, so in grease pencil view, if we do uh, use the middle click to rotate, we're going to get, we're gonna be taken out and into the 3D view. We don't want that. So let's click this camera button here. Either two things we could do, we can hit shift and then pan the canvas to stay within this 2D view or we can click this hand right here to pan the canvas around. So very useful. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and go up to edit preferences and I'm going to go to, let's see, themes. I guess they might've gotten rid of the multiple themes, huh? Well, let's move ahead with the light version. Uh, I don't know, it's just a bright day. I'd rather have a light theme. Now, so you can go ahead and start messing around with drawing. Pressure sensitivity should be working um, by default. If it isn't, go ahead right up here where you see radius, which is the size of the brush. Go ahead and click that pressure sensitivity button. When you um, have it unchecked, there'll be no pressure sensitivity. When you have it checked, there will be pressure sensitivity uh, activated on your brush. Um, you know, you might wanna um, do that for your own purposes, have them checked or unchecked. We also have strength. You can check that with pressure sensitivity to add some opacity to your strokes. So pressing down harder makes the stroke darker and pressing lighter makes the stroke uh, lighter. So now 
I'm gonna uncheck that, try some different brushes. We also have this airbrush right here, okay. Uh, we have the ink pen, which we were just using. We have, let's see, this looks like a rough pen, so we got some texture to it. We also have a marker looking brush, which has no, we can also add pressure to these by clicking these options, if, we, if so please. Calligraphy brush for writing, which is nice. And uh, the good thing about um, Blender grease pencils is that it's based on vectors. So the, no matter how much I zoom in, uh, these strokes are never going to lose quality. They're never going to lose resolution, which is why Blender grease pencil is great for things like storyboarding. Okay, trying all the brushes. I think there's really one that only one that I really want to use. Spread and it's not very, it's not very exciting. It's just this basic pen brush. Copilot, how do we change brush size in, in Blender? To change the brush size in Blender, you can simply press the F key and then drag your mouse to adjust the size. Alternatively, you can adjust the radius slider in the brush settings panel on the right to change the size of your brush. Give it a try. Okay, so we can go to the brush settings panel. That's right here on the right, and we can change the radius. We can also right click to adjust the size and strength of our brush. Strength is the opacity, so uh, strength is halfway, we get that. Strength all the way, we get a dark line. Down here, we have automatically created our first frame. So each time you go to a frame and draw, uh, the default Blender Grease Pencil preset is going to make a frame for you. So you can just scroll on the timeline to whatever frame you want, and then start drawing. Okay, so I'm just making this, you know, ball animation drop over here. And this is pretty easy stuff. I mean, it's not really um, hard to understand. They've really come a long way in making Grease Pencil usable for everyone. So now we can go back to the start and then we can hit play down here to play our animation. That's yeah, so a very, very simple. Um, and that's pretty much it uh, for Grease Pencil as to how to draw and how to create things. There's really not much more to it than this. Um, of course, we want to add different colors so we can um, take a look at this fill section down here below. And this is a layer beneath the lines layer um, that's created by default. So let's go ahead and try to draw with different colors. One thing I like to do, I have to click this little arrow up here and then go to tool. That gives me some of the tools that are in this Blender context menu right on the side of my canvas where I like them. Okay, so in order to change color in Blender, you can do two things. You can uh, select color attribute, which means that your color is gonna change on the fly. But if you want to change the color and have it saved within the Blender library, so you don't have to repeatedly try to find it again on the color wheel after selecting it, you can go down to your materials section. Okay, and now we have this solid stroke here, which we started in, which was black. But say I want to make a permanent red color, meaning it's a red that I'm going to use over and over again. And anytime I want to use it, I just want to go to this menu and select it. It's a very specific color. So let's go ahead and hit plus, new. I'm going to save it to stroke. We can also have fill in there, but we'll check that out later. We're going to set it to red. Okay, very specific uh, cherry red. All right, so now I'm in all my fills layer. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this ball. Uh, right click, increase the radius of my brush, maybe that much. Then I'm gonna fill in the color of this ball. All right, and if I change the base color, did you know Do you know the ball will change color? So um, this these colors will stay as saved materials, which is really nice if you wanna use them later on in your animation. Timeline and draw, automatically a frame will be created for me. Really very simple, traditional animation controls. They did a really nice job with this. Blender's Grease Pencil offers a great mix of simplicity and power. Those animation controls make it accessible for everyone. Ready to try animating your character next? Okay, let's do it. So uh, Copilot wants us to start animating a character next. I don't want any of these to show, so let's take out the first lines in and uh, what's it called fills layer and then we're going to have our over to the data tab and so these are the two layers that we've hidden so we're going to hit plus to add a new layer for our character and just going to double click it and we're going to name it character 
All right, and uh, we'll double click it again and we'll just name it roughs. Uh, these will be the rough sketch of our character. And now here we can go ahead and just um, start with our rough sketch. So I'm going to go back to materials, hit the solid stroke, and get this, uh, you know, pretty basic pen. Nearly no pressure sensitivity. I don't really sketch with pressure sensitivity, to be honest with you. Just want it to be pretty small. I'm just going to go ahead and start drawing. Diving into your rough sketch is a great first step. Experiment with shapes and lines. Trust your instincts and have fun with it. What kind of character are you thinking of creating? You know, I don't really know yet. I just kind of go with um, whatever my imagination sends me with and then just try to see if I can finish it and make it look as professional as possible. That's a great approach. Embracing whatever your imagination brings can lead to some truly unique characters. Trust the process and enjoy the creative journey. Can't wait to see how it turns out. All right, thank you. So I want to move this ear a little bit over to the left. So what I can do is I can go ahead and go to edit mode up here, select the draw mode, hit edit mode. Um, I'm going to undo that stroke. Edit mode, and then I can select this with the box select, and then I can hit G on the keyboard. Well, I don't know which one of these is mapped to G. So I can go ahead and uh, select it, and then I can hit move, then drag it over here just to wherever I want it. Okay, and then I can go back to draw mode and keep drawing. So I'm just trying to turn this pen over and start erasing, but if you don't know have a pen eraser, go ahead down here and select one of these erasers. They'll work just fine. Can't select this with a square. Okay, I can, but I, I'd rather, I'm gonna whole click the selection box, scroll down and then hit selection lasso. That's a little bit more accurate. If you wanna erase a little quicker, you can go to, to one of these erasers and hit point stroke. Let's see, so you can erase the entire stroke. If you set it to point, it'll erase just to points. Dissolve will make it kind of fade away. Don't forget to hit save once in a while. Go to file, hit save. All right, so we got two frames down. You can see how you can pretty much animate anything you want in here. We're gonna add a layer underneath this. We're gonna make this our new fills layer. Okay, so head over to this world icon in the scene properties, hit color, I'll change the background to my favorite blue color. Then in our new uh, layer that we created underneath the lines, we're gonna make a new color to fill in. We're gonna, instead of selecting stroke, we're gonna select fill. Go ahead and hit white. And then you notice it'll, it'll let us draw a shape and have the entire area filled for us. So very useful. Okay, new color. Let's make this slightly bluish. Oh, whoops. Needed to edit the color underneath fill, not stroke. There we go. Limited amount of layers. You can, uh, I can easily go over this and make my cleanup. Very, very simple tools to use in Blender Grease Pencil. So, in order to export our animation, say we just want to export this uh, short, these two frames right here. Go ahead and hit the output settings. So it's gonna, our resolution is up here, 1920 by 1080. Output, you can select where you want, which folder you want your output to land in. The file format, you can, if you want it to be a video, you can make it into an FMMPEG video. Hit encoding, see which container you want, probably MPEG-4. You can also export audio. If you're using the Blender video editor, we can go over that another time. I usually like to use PCM. Then after that, go ahead and hit render. Render animation, F12, very easy. Oh, well last thing, you're gonna have the frame range that you're gonna be rendering. So it's gonna be, right now it's one to 250. So that'll render uh, up to frame 250. So if you reset that, that'll just um, set the in and out points for how long you want your render to be. That's all the time I have for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Check out Printful with the link in the description below to kickstart your print-on-demand business and start making a revenue stream out of your wonderful artwork. That's all from me. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.